So the first one is Prince Williams, the Duke of Cambridge and his Duchess arrived in Pakistan on October 15, 2019. And why it is important? Because this is the first high official visit from Britain to Pakistan since 2006. Okay, so the visit was organized upon request of United Kingdom and Commonwealth Office. The UK aims at access to quality education to girls and young women in Pakistan. So this is the aim is to access quality education for girls and young women in Pakistan. Clear. So Prince Williams and Duke of Cambridge, that he is the Duke of Cambridge and his this is or arrive in Pakistan on October 15, 2019, and this is the first after 2006. So about the United Kingdom, it's made up of England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Okay, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland. So this is an island nation in northwestern Europe. And this is the birthplace of Shakespeare and the Beatles, and him is home to the capital London, a globally influential center of finance and culture. England is also site of Neolithic Stonehenge and Bath Roman Spa and centuries old universities like Oxford and Cambridge. And now currently the Prime Minister is Boris Johnson trending, and capital you already got London. And currency is pound sterling. So coming to the second one, U.S. sanctions on Turkey, penalties imposed on Turkish officials to stop invasion into Syria. So U.S. imposed some penalties on Turkish Turkish officials to stop invasion into Syria. So Syria. Officially known as Syrian Arab Republic is a country in Western Asia and bordering Lebanon to the southwest, Mediterranean Sea to the west, Turkey to the north, Iraq to the east, and Jordan to the south, and Israel to the southwest. And Turkey is a nation straddling Eastern Europe and Western Asia with cultural connections to ancient Greek, Persian, Roman, Byzantine and Ottoman empires. So cosmopolitan Istanbul on the Bosphorus Strait is home to the iconic Hagia Sophia with its soaring dome and Christian mosaics and the massive 17th century blue Moscow and the circa 1460. The Pakki place and former home of sultans. Ankara is the Turkish modern capital. So Turkish modern capital is Ankara. So just look at the map, it is very clear. So you will see that this is Syria and Mediterranean Sea here and this is Iraq, Jordan, Iran and Turkey. Turkey tries to invest, uh, put invention on in Syria. So that's why US put some penalties on the Turkish officials. Clear. So guys, if you enjoy this session, then do subscribe to my channel and of course, like and share with your friends. Clear? So, coming to the static ZK portion, you already got that I try to include few static ZK in every session so that it will help you to have idea about some important ZK that might come in your coming competitive examinations. Okay, so today's static ZKs are, first one is the members of the Election Commission of India has a tenure of how many years? So, election commission, election commissions of India's member has a tenure of six years. Do you remember it? Six years. Second, so the Thumapalle mine, which is considered to have one of the world's largest reserves of 1.50 lakh tons of uranium, how much? 1.50 lakh tons of uranium is located in Andhra Pradesh. Okay, so it was formed in 1616 AD and this is very important. The Denise East India Company was formed in 1660 AD, 1616 AD. So they established their settlements at 
Kankwever in Tamil Nadu, 1620, and Serampur in Bengal. Names is very important. First, Tankwever in Tamil Nadu and Sirampur in Bengal. Though they failed to strengthen themselves in India and finally in the beginning of 19th century, they sold all their settlements to the British and went back to their country. So the Danish East India Company was formed in 1616. Next, the world's largest wetland is Pantanal. Do you remember it? Pantanal is the world's largest wetland and it covers 200,000 square kilometers during the wet season from Brazil, Paraguay, and Bolivia, although 80% of it is in Brazil. It is a land of flooded grasslands, savannas, and tropical forests. So, remember the name, the world's largest wetland is Pentanel and 80% of is in Brazil. Next, Lord Mayo. Okay, Lord Mayo or Lord Mayo started the process of decentralization of finance in India. Question may come like that. Who started the process of decentralization of finance in India? So he is Lord Mayo. And Lord Mayo, or sometimes he also known as Lord Nuss. And AAS Lord Ness served as the fourth viceroy of India from 12 January to 8 February 1872. So he is the fourth viceroy of India and he opened up Mayo College in Ajmer for educating children of the aristocratic families. Mayo College in Ajmer being opened up by him and also he was the first governor general to be murdered in office by Pathan Sheh Ali in Port Blair. He was murdered in Port Blair by Pathan Sher Ali and he was the first governor general to be murdered in office. Clear? So all these five static ZKs are clear and from them at least 10 questions may be formed. So next current affair is Acting Chief Justice of Karnataka High Court Justice Lingappa Narayana Sami Justice Lingappa Narayana Swami was appointed as the new Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh High Court. Clear? So, current now, current Justice Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh High Court is Lingappa Narayana Swami. He took oath as the new Chief Justice of Himachal Pradesh on 13 October and it was admitted, the oath was administered by the governor of Himachal Pradesh, Mr. Vandaru Dattarya. Okay. Now, Himachal Pradesh is famous for Tibetan culture because it hosts to the Dalai Lama. It, and as it hosts to Dalai Lama, so it favors a strong Tibetan presence. Then, its capital is in Simla and chief minister is Jairam Thakur. Next, Indian settler Priyanshu Rajawat. Indian settler Priyanshu Rajawat won the men's singles title at the Bahrain International Series Badminton at Isha Town on 14 October. So, Priyanshu Rajawat won the men's singles title at the Bahrain International Series Badminton at Isha Town. And he was <clears throat> he defeated Jason Anthony Hoshue from Canada and he is 17 years old. Priyanshu Razawat. Okay. Next, Margaret, <coughs> Margaret Atwood and Barnardine Evaristo. Okay. Margaret Atwood and Barnardine Evaristo has been have been announced as the joint winners of 2019 Booker Prize. So this is also very very important. You surely will find a question on who won the Booker Prize 2019. So Margaret Atwood and Bernardine Evaristo they have been announced as the joint winners of the 2019 Booker Prize. 
and this is the first time that joint winners are announced this is that's why this is also very important for the first time joint winners are announced and aptitude one for the testaments so testaments is the name of the book and it is her sequel to the handmaid's tale so just name try to remember the name testaments for this book c1 the uh, book of press and the other one that is Ivaristo, Bernadine Ivaristo, C1 for her novel, Girl, Woman, and Other. Girl, Woman, Other. So Margaret Atwood and Bernadine, they jointly been announced as the winner of 2019 book of press and this of, and Atwood won for her novel, and testaments and that is the sequel to Handa Handmaid's Tale and Ivaristo one for the novel Garomen other. Next, Kenishet Eliyahu Singago at Kala Goda Glorious Church in Baikulla and Flora Fountain, three city landmarks of Mumbai, won the UNESCO Asia Pacific Award for Cultural Heritage Conservation for the year 2019 for cultural heritage conservation for the year 2019 so this is also important the indian institute of technology madras signed an agreement with action mobile research and engineering company emre for research on energy and biofuels and it is a five-year joint research agreement then the aim is to conduct research that will focus on biofuels, data analytics, transport, gas and conversion. It also intends to find low emission solutions. So Indian Institute of Madras, that is IITM, signed an agreement with Action Mobile Research and Engineering Company for a research on energy and biofuels. Next, International Day of Rural Women. International Day of Rural Women is observed yesterday that is 15 october every year and this is held under rubric rural women and girls building climate resilience okay rubric rural women and girls building climate resilience and why it is conducted uh, it is observed every year on 15 october because the aim is to highlight the important role played by rural women and girls in building the resilience to face the climate crisis. So this is all about the resilience to face climate crisis. Clear. So Saurabh Ganguly all set to become the BCCI president, president and he will lead the BCCI till 2020 and Amit Shah Sons Jaisa will be the next secretary of BCCI. So the last current affair of the session is India and Netherlands launched the second phase of the local treatment of urban sewage streams for healthy reuse plan. Local treatment of urban sewage streams for healthy reuse plants, that is Lotus Asia, as a part of joint collaboration on 49. So India and Netherlands, they launched a second phase of Lotus Acer as a part of joint collaboration and that what is Lotus Acer stands for? Lotus Acer stands for local treatment of urban sewage streams of for healthy reuse plants. So guys, these are the important and selected current affairs for today. So coming to the today's question from the last class and today's question is ministers of science and technology inaugurated the National Center for Clean Coal Research and Development. The National Center for Clean Coal Research and Development at first option IIC Bangalore, B, option B, IIT Guwahati, option C, Tezpur University, then option D, IIS here, Pune. So comment your answer and I will give the answer in the 